God's blessings to all of you here and online with us. On this cloudy, but nonetheless glorious New Year's Eve morning, this is Baker Memorial, United Methodist Church, where our mission is living God's will to love, welcome, and share Christ with all. We are a reconciling community where diversity is welcomed and respected. Late last Sunday night, after an amazing trio of spirit-filled services through Christmas Eve, a couple of us asked Pastor John what he was going to be doing while on vacation. He simply quipped, getting rest. So while he is doing that, at this worship service, we gladly have laity serving you this morning. Becky Kapil, Bonnie Schmiel, Connie Tushimoto, and myself. We are pleased to serve you this morning. And we hope by the Holy Spirit that we will bring inspiration to each one of us this morning as we head into the new year together as a community in Jesus Christ. Becky has some announcements to share with us at this time. Thank you, Rosalie. It is my joy to be worshiping with you this morning. And to those of you online, welcome. The pullout in your, the insert in your bulletin has some announcements for the week. Um, today, uh, tomorrow, New Year's Day, the office will be closed, but then there are office hours after that are Wednesday and Thursday from 8 to 2, and Tuesday from 8 to 1. And on Wednesday, the bell choir will have rehearsal, and on, and what? And, and the choir will have rehearsal also at 6.30 at for the bell choir, 7.30 for the choir. All are welcome, by the way, to choir. On Thursday, there'll be yoga at 10 a.m. And on Friday, the UWF will have its first meeting of the year, the executive committee meeting at 9.30 a.m. in the chapel. Um, we would like to congratulate the Splains for 65 years of marriage. I hope they're watching. Um, Tom's under the weather. But the flowers on the altar are to commemorate their 65 years of marriage. And please, if anyone's interested, please take your poinsettia with you today. It'd be great to get them all out of the church so someone doesn't have to come in regularly and take care of them so that they don't wilt. Thank you, Becky. As we settle into an attitude of prayer during the prelude, let us give glory to God for his love, grace, mercy, and compassion. Let us release any troubles we may have walked in with today to Jesus, who was born to save us and who carries us through, bringing us renewed strength, hope, joy, and peace. You will certainly recognize Go Tell It on the Mountain, played for us by Jeff Thompson.
please join me in the call to worship. We have welcomed the Christ child and declared the glory of God's salvation that comes to live among us. And yet, we will wait. We still wait. We prepare to welcome 2024, thankful for how God has brought us through the past year, and look forward to the good things God will do in the new year. We join generations of Christ followers from the past who learned and taught us how to pray, wait, listen, and notice God's love and grace at work in the world. Come, let us worship. Worship God, whose love endures from generation to generation, guiding us from one year to the next. Our opening hymn is Good Christian Friends Rejoice on page 224 in your hymnal. Please join as you are will please rise as you are willing and able and join in singing. While you're on your feet, please turn to those around you and give them a good Christian greeting. And hello to everyone online. And happy New Year's Eve. Judy Bumgarner's message. Good morning. Could I have all the children down here, please? I hope you've all noticed, and I'm sure you have, really, how wonderful it is to have young persons acolyting, lighting our candles, and then taking the word of God out the door as we recess from church. So we're so happy to have you here, and you're doing a superb job. Thank you, all of you. Okay, so did you all have a nice Christmas? Did you get a present or two or more? Whoa, wow. Is there anything that really stands out that you want to tell us about, what you liked? I got an iPad. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Do you have a favorite? 
favorite? You look. They were all my favorite. All your favorite, sure. I got a horse. A horse. <laughs> oh, you'll have to bring it and show us sometime, okay? We got these big whiteboards oh. to go under our bed. Cool. And what do you use them for? Cool. That's very nice. Oh, a hoverball. It's like a drone and a horse. A hoverboard and a drone? A hoverball. And how does that work? And what about you, Georgie? So what did Santa bring you? He got some cars, cool cars, and a tool set. Dad's going to put you to work pretty fast, I guess, right? Building things and fixing things. Well, I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas. I'm sure you did. And today I wanted to talk about ways that we could try to remember all the joy and the warmth and fun we had during Christmas so that we realize Christmas is just one day. And yes, we got the best gift in the world anybody could ever ask for when God gave us his son Jesus because he's the guy that taught us all about love and giving and sharing and forgiving. So I was thinking, do you see what I got here? I made you each a little gift over here. If you want to come over and grab one, it's a little bell. And even though this bell is so tiny, it doesn't make a whole lot of noise. But you know, if you put all these bells together, they make a real difference, right, in the sound. How many of you were here to hear our, our um, bell choir play? I got a big one for you. Okay. Some of, I know some of you were here. We sat over there on the floor and we listened to the bell choir play, all those beautiful bells. Yes, right. Well, if you wear this bell, as a reminder of all the joy and love that we shared on Christmas Day, that's available to us every day of our lives. We just have to remember. So even when we're having a bad day, things aren't going so great, or we're angry, or we're scared, we're upset about something, it's easy to, you need to try to remember that Jesus is always there with you. You're never alone. He's there offering you love and protection and joy. So I think that's the important thing is to keep that spirit of Christmas in our heart every day and remember to call on Jesus when we need help and when we feel sad and we feel bad. Um, let's see. Because, you know, I realize that after Christmas, sometimes after the presents are wrapped and all the goodies are gone, we've eaten all our share of cookies and candy and, and had a, and sang a lot of carols that sometimes it's kind of a little letdown for us. But of course, you get to go to school tomorrow in a couple of days, so that'll pick you right up again, I'm sure. <laughs> You're going when? Tuesday, right. We have another couple days left. So we're going to make something in, um, in our Sunday school room this morning to help with the bell, something you can hang up hopefully in your room or somewhere where you can, in, in a drawer or on your dresser that will help remind you about the joy of Christmas. All right. So will you please say a little prayer with me? I'll lead you in prayer. Close your eyes. Hold your hands. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us so much that you gave us your son, Jesus, on Christmas Day. Help us to always to remember your love is with us each and every day, to be grateful and to share your love with others. Amen.
Did you see our Buffalo Bills dresses down here? Did you make those? Yeah. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? Thank you. Bills, right? <laughs> okay, we can Our responsive reading is number 734 in your hymnal. It is the canticle of hope. We shall see a new heaven and earth, for the old will pass away. The city sh shall need no sun or moon, for God's glory will be its light. We shall hear a loud voice from the throne. God shall wipe away all our tears, and there shall be no more death. We shall hear one speak from the throne. Our Lord testifies to these things. The grace of our Lord is with us. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus, come. The scripture reading is Peter 3, 8 through 17. you give us the intro to that? I, it's in my purse. I don't have it. Hmm? Where is that old intro? No, yeah. Okay, so we'll read the scripture. You'll get it. <laughs> Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing, because th to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who is, going to do harm, who is going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, if it is God's will, to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As the year closes and we enter anew, let us turn our thoughts to everything that God has given us, the gift of faith, abundant graces lavished on us, hope, and the promise of salvation. It is a time to praise God. It is a time to consider ways in which we might honor and glorify him with a monetary offering or with a gift of our time and talents. During the offertory music, if you desire, you are welcome to bring an offering and place it in one of the plates in the front or back of the church. You may also donate by pressing on the Give button on our website. As you reflect, Jeff will play the Huron Carol.
awesome God, hear our prayer and dedication. Loving Father, we give glory to you and offer these gifts in gratitude for all the blessings we have received from you, not just in the past year, but all throughout our lives. Guide this church community in their use as we partner with you in building your kingdom here on this earth so that others may know your goodness and the promise of salvation. We thank you for calling us to ministry in the name of your son, Jesus, and for giving us the skills and resources to do your work. Amen. You may be seated. Connie will bring us the second scripture reading. The book of Jude speaks to Christians. The first 19 verses warn that those who drift from the teachings of Christ into disbelief and immorality will suffer. Today's scripture reading is designed to inspire Christians to hold to the truth and seek to live a life of holiness. From the New International Version, Jude, verses 20 through 25. But you, dear friends, by building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourself in God's love as you wait for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to bring you to eternal life. Be merciful to those who doubt. Save others by snatching them from the fire. To others, show mercy mixed with fear, hating even the clothing stained by corrupted flesh. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy, to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated for the message that Bonnie will give us. Well, some of you are probably wondering how you got me up here on the last Sunday of the year. And for that, you can credit our pastor's long memory. John, we were having a conversation several years ago when, when he was relatively new as a pastor here at Baker. And he said to me, have you ever thought about going into the ministry? And I said, well, I thought about it, but it became clear to me that that probably wasn't the way I should go. You don't want to give somebody like me a forum to talk to people every Sunday for the rest of their lives. It's not a good plan. God figured that out a long time before I did. But I had mentioned to John at that time, I think I have one good sermon in me that's been floating around in my head for 40 years. And he said to me about a month ago, I'm going to take that week after Christmas off. 
And he says, and I've looked all over, and I cannot find anyone else to be your pastor today to give the sermon. And he said, I remember you saying you had one good sermon. So you are about to get the one good sermon. And the other piece of that is, is so I've been practicing and tuning up and stuff. And a couple days ago, I was walking at Knox, and I went through it in my head, and it took 17 minutes. Last night, when I went through it, it took nine. So we'll see what you get. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, Rosalie assures me that most adults have an attention span for 17 minutes. So we'll see what happens with that. So Judy was asking the kids, how was your Christmas? You have a good Christmas? Did you get some good gifts? Anybody get one that just blew them out of the park? Nobody? Kind of mundane? I got a couple. The one I got was a puzzle. Now, I love putting together puzzles. The thing about that is, is I like to do it with other people. And so we always, when I was growing up, we had a puzzle on a table somewhere whenever the family got together that you just worked on whenever you wanted. Um, in fact, we did one when my, fam my daughter and her family were here. We put one together. And so I have, I got a puzzle. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, I have quite a few of them. And so probably that puzzle is going to go in a box until someone else shows up at my house to help me put it together. I also got a $50 gift certificate gift card to Tim Hortons. I love Tim Hortons especially the cream and the tea, because it's got, the manager told me, 19% butter fat. So for those of you who are into cream, go for the Tim Hortons and have one or two or three creams. What's interesting about that $50 gift card is it came from the kid who's always giving me a hard time about patronizing chain restaurants that don't keep the money locally. Doesn't like that at all. But I will use that Tim Hortons gift card, the puzzle, I will put on a shelf. So Judy was telling the children, and we've said it several times, John said it last week, the greatest gift of Christmas is God's gift of the Christ child. So what will you do with that gift? Will you put it on the shelf with the puzzles, or will you use it? and go to Tim Hortons every day and have tea with one cream. How will you use that gift? If you're bored, there's a Bible in the back of your pews there. And you can read, if, you, if one of your resolutions is to read more scripture, there are six books right before Revelation at the end of the Bible. They're all called epistles, letters from some disciple or another you can feel really good about them because you can read a whole book in like five minutes. So if your goal is to read more Bible, pick one of those, you'll feel really accomplished. So the first scripture that Becky read was from 1 Peter. Don't get confused, there is 1 and 2 Peter. But Peter, you remember Peter, he was the guy that always was running his mouth and he gives some very basic, solid information about how to use that gift of the Christ child. And a lot of them are stuff we're used to hearing. Love one another. Be humble. Seek peace and pursue it. But the one that I'm going to focus on this morning is toward the end of that segment of 1 Peter. It said, Always be prepared to give the reason for the hope that lives within you. Do you have hope? Is it living in you? Pastor John last week was talking about all of the awful things, or some of the awful things, that have happened in our lifetime. And 
One of them was the Kennedy assassination. There was some other things, but in the face of all of the things that have happened through history and the lot that have happened in our history, in our lifetime, is it possible to have hope and to have it living within you? And bigger than that, he asks us to be prepared to give the reason for the hope that lives within you. Most every Sunday at the end, Pastor John will say, go share what you have received in this service with someone else. Are you prepared? Do you have something that you could say? How many of you do a good job of sharing your faith? Anybody? Arlene says she is. Rosalie says she is. I've struggled with that. I grew up in an era when you had people that would come up and clap their hand on your shoulder and say, are you saved? I remember as a teenager just going, Ugh. that was really hard for me. And then there's the people that stand on the corner with the tracts and they'll give you something. They're always laying in the post office if you go there. Is that sharing the reason for the hope that lives within you? You know who I struggled most with that? The people closest to me. I've talked to some of you. I've talked to Sally and some of the others. Have we given our children the reason for the hope that lives within us? Peter says, you have to do it gently and with respect. And I think that's good advice. The other thing is, I don't think it has to be a long sermon or a thesis like Martin Luther nailed on a church door. It just has to be a simple statement about why you have hope, about why there's a hope that lives within you. Which brings me to the second reading. The good news is when you're the bottom of the barrel and the last one to be chosen to speak, you don't have to have a psalm and a Hebrew Bible reading and a New Testament reading. You can just pick two readings that you like. So that's what you got this morning. <laughs> Jude is another one of those little books at the end of the New Testament. It comes right before Revelation. And most people don't know anything about it. And as Connie mentioned, and she mentioned to me in Tops the other day, those first 19 verses are pretty rough. Um, lots of warnings and hellfire and brimstone and stuff. But mostly what people know about Jude is that benediction that Connie read so beautifully at the end. And that's the reason that I have hope, is that benediction. What's a benediction? Anybody know? We have one. It's the blessing at the end of the service. It's what the pastor says that lets you know you're going to get out soon. So a benediction, I don't have any training to be a pastor, nothing in homiletics or in theology or anything, but I did have four years of high school Latin. <laughs> and benediction is bene, good, and diction, word, speak, say. So benediction, give a good word, give a blessing. And at the end of Jude, he gives a benediction that I heard very often when I was growing up. And now unto him who is able to keep you from falling or stumbling, in the translation that was in the bulletin. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless, faultless, perfect, before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy.
through the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and forevermore. That gives me hope. The God that created the universe and flung the planets into space can wipe away everything I've ever done that displeased him. All my pride, all my selfishness, all of the nasty things I ever did, all of the things I didn't do because I said, I'll get around to it next week, or I'll do that later. I'll do that when I'm older. So all of those sins, they used to call them sins of omission, the things you omitted doing, and sins of commission, the things that you did do that you shouldn't have done. So that God can forgive all that and wipe all that away. Present me and you faultless before a perfect throne, before a holiness that we can't even imagine. But we are all forgiven. That's the God that we serve. A God who can keep us from stumbling and falling if we look to him and trust him. And a God who at the end can present us faultless. Think about that. Think about what that means for your life. Think of the freedom that that gives you. Think of the joy that that can give you. The kids two weeks ago sang in church, and there's, they sang Away in a Manger. Most of you know Away in a Manger. But that second verse, which might be a good prayer for all of us to say before we go to bed at night, be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. That God who is with us and whose spirit can guide us every day to keep us from falling can fit us for heaven to spend eternity with him. So that's what gives me hope. That's the hope that lives within me. And I can be prepared to say just that. That's the reason for the hope that lives within me. I can do that. I can tell people that. I just told you. Amen. It is that time of year when we will do a Christmas carol and a sing along, I guess. Um, so I actually am going to ask Bonnie to come back up and MC this, as she has in the past. Uh, we will uh, sing, let's say, five or six carols uh, from the hymnal. You can shout out what your favorite, not yet, what your favorite is. We'll get to it. This is often also known as Stump the Organist, because I play these but once a year, and I don't play all of them. So uh, bear with me. Uh, the Christmas carols really start on page... 216 and go through page 260 no sorry 254 okay so you can choose anything between those 216 and 254 um, we will probably just sing one maybe two verses if it's one that I think has another verse that we need to sing um, but I will have uh, Bonnie announce uh, to the congregation which one we're going to do uh, so let's say let's say five carols and we'll see what the time is and see if we want to do one more I Was thinking of asking Jeff if he wanted somebody to do this, but then I forgot about that So who has a favorite carol that they'd like to sing Rosalie has one? 
Joy to the World, we'll do the first and the last verses, right, Jeff? 246, Jeff said. You can all be seated. We don't have to stand for the whole thing. Anybody on this side have a favorite? Two twenty-seven. Just one verse of this, Jeff. One and six, Jeff says. Somebody on this side. Pardon? It came upon a midnight clear. What, what page is that? 218. What verse is Jeff? First verse of 218, it came upon a midnight clear. Mary, you've got one. 224. What is it? Hmm? Good for sh Christian friends rejoice. We'll do a reprise, just the first verse, right?
I believe this was a drinking song, so sing it with spirit. What's 245, Rita? The first Noel. What verse is Jeff? One in five of the, of the first Noel. Verses one and five. Away in a manger, what page? What page? 217? 217, they said. Okay, that's good. First and last verse. this like a little kid. Thank you. Now it looks like, if I got the program here, it looks like I'm up for the prayer. So since it's the end of the year, there's a lot of things that we have to pray for and a lot of people on our prayer list. I'm going to be up here at the rail. If anybody wants to join me at the altar rail, please feel free to come and join me.
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you on the last day of this year, grateful for so many things, grateful for all of the blessings of our lives, but especially for the blessings of answered prayers, for the children that have joined us this Christmas season in our worship, and for the simple joy and the pleasure that they bring in both hearing their praises and their testimony. We thank you for the healings, for the progress for babies Emmett and Lila. We thank you for the gift of marriage and for Barb and Tom Splain, whose marriage represents 65 years of commitment, Lord. We are grateful for that marriage and for that of all of those within our church that have been examples to so many of us. We thank you for people in this church that step forward and that do what needs to be done, often without any fuss or acknowledgement, but that serve you quietly. We thank you for our church family for people that reinforce the good things we do and kind of look at us when we do things that aren't maybe so appropriate in a kind way to say, don't do that again. This church fellowship that gives us a place to be and people who love us and that we can love in return, we thank you. And Father, there's so many that have been on our prayer list. Those that we've mentioned regularly for Steve and Mia, for the healing of Eileen Kasicki, who's been cancer free now for almost a year, for Bob and Nancy, Trevor, Jennifer, Julie, Clay, Paige, Linda, Mary, Connor, and Kathy all of these who deal with ongoing health challenges. We ask that they feel your love and presence around them every day and that it helps give them the courage to face that day. We ask for healing for Margaret and Michael, for Ross McIntyre and Beth Milks, Matthew, Donna, Shirley and Lisa, Chris, Maddie, and Margaret. And for Tom Splain as he has this bug right now, and for others, Karen Baker and others in our congregation. We ask prayers for those who are alone, for those who sometimes face challenges of depression and need hope to face each day. Once again, Father, we ask that you are with them and that if no one else calls them during that day, that they know that you are there next to them and that you are in their corner. For those that struggle with addiction and for dependence on alcohol or drugs, it's such a crushing disease, Father, we ask for your healing and your love to be obvious to each of them through us as we try to extend love and understanding. We pray for the conflicts in the world, for the leaders of all nations, that they may see your vision for our world, that they may have an idea of your kingdom coming to be here as was promised, that they would seek peace and pursue it. For the conflicts both in the Ukraine and in Israel and Gaza, but in all areas of the world, and for those who have no power but suffer the most,
the widows, the orphans, those who are injured and those who have no say in what is happening. You speak for the powerless, Father. Now in your hearts, take a few minutes to offer to our Father your prayer. Dear Father, help us in this new year to be assured of your love and care and to share the reason for the hope that lives within us with those around us who ask for that reason. Keep us close to you and help us to pray as you taught us. Our Father, And now would you join us in the last hymn, which is getting ready to give a reason for the hope that lives within you. Go tell it on the mountain, which is page 251. Receive this good word, this blessing. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power 
now and forevermore. There is no choir this morning for a choral benediction, so you will be the choir. So the words to the refrain of this choral benediction will be on the screen, and I ask you to join me when I get to them. Before the days of youth are left in vain, before the dust reclaims its own again, breathe on me, breathe, O oh breath of God, breathe on me till my heart is new. said and all has come undone restore the promise I made when I was young now unto him who can keep us from falling present us faultless before his glory yeah. breathe on me breathe O oh breath of God breathe on me till my Breathe on me till 